Representing the Bachelor of Fine Arts students is Jonathan Rudnitsky. Jonathan is originally from Harrington Park, New Jersey. He is graduating from the University of Southern California with a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Acting. He has been involved in five School of Theater productions during his time here. He was fortunate, he was fortunate enough to receive the John Ritter Memorial Scholarship Award for outstanding comic performance for his role in A Flea in Her Ear during his freshman year. Jonathan also enjoys performing stand-up comedy regularly around the Los Angeles area. He most recently won the Laugh Bowl College Comedy Competition hosted by the Hollywood Laugh Factory. Jonathan. Hello, and thank you for having me as your BFA commencement speaker. It is my honor and your mistake. It's okay, we all make them, just ask my parents. <laughs> you know, technically, we are the last school of theater students to attend USC because as many of you know, in an attempt to keep up with the times, starting next year, this will be known as the School of Dramatic Arts, despite my suggestion of naming it the John Redditsy School of Stardom and Fame. I had a whole vision of how we could revamp and update the program. Instead of offering standard and dated theater courses, we would provide practical lectures like posing for paparazzi, Scientology 101, <laughs> faking your sexuality, which would include a one-day master class by John Travolta. <laughs> and of course, a how to make a celebrity sex tape class taught by our very own Joseph Hacker. For some reason, the poos didn't go for that one. <laughs> Jack Rowe loved it, though, didn't you, Jack? <laughs> so I guess with that being said, congratulations to the final USC School of Theater class of 2012. <laughs> my colleagues, my colleagues, my friends, fellow artists, future Starbucks baristas. <laughs> I'm honored to be on this stage with you today. To be honest, I thought this day may never come, mainly because of my lack of attendance to all my general education courses, resulting in a truly abysmal GPA. I'm not proud to say that my blood alcohol average is actually higher than my grade point average in college, but <laughs> hey, I'm getting a diploma nonetheless, so suck on that Greek mythology. <laughs> it's a great privilege to have the prestigious alum Gary Ross here as our commencement speaker. He's the director of a recent film entitled The Hunger Games. I, um... Interesting. I haven't heard of it, so... Um... I'm pretty sure it's a documentary about Kobayashi and Joey Chestnut competing in the world's largest hot dog eating contest. I'm joking, of course. It was a groundbreaking film, to say the least. And all I can say is if you're in need of any actors for your next, uh, for your next movie, we volunteer as tribute, huh? <laughs> Greetings to the faculty who have all guided us on our artistic journeys these past four years. They've seen us through our best days and on the days when we wanted to throw in the towel. They've made us cry, and they've made us cry more. <laughs> and last but not least, a big shout out to our families out there in the audience, without whom none of this would be possible, mainly to our top four favorite family members who cleared the VIP list and made it into the actual theater. <laughs> You are here for a special reason. Not only do we uh, collectively love you more, but you really flipped the bill on this one. Let's face it, it wasn't cheap, huh? <laughs> As for our inferior and less loved family members who really contributed nothing to our education, I hope you're enjoying your seats out there in the patio. <laughs> Take advantage of the weather, do some tailgating, you cheap bastards. You know, one check would have been nice. It's only 200 grand, after all, right?
got through it. Are you going to kick me out of here yet? Okay. Okay. You know that feeling right before you're about to go on stage and you think, what if I forget all my lines? What if my prop isn't where it's supposed to be? What if I have a wardrobe malfunction and everyone sees how well endowed I am? I'm not referring to myself with that particular example, unfortunately. But I think we can all relate to that flash of panic right before we black out and do whatever it is we do best. That anxious uncertainty is something I would imagine many of us feel today, just maybe times 10. Because instead of applying those feelings to a play, we're now applying it to the next stage of life. And instead of it lasting a second, it doesn't seem to be going away. You might be thinking right now, I really should have taken my parents' advice and been a business major. I mean, it might have not been as rewarding, but what am I going to do now? In order to fully assess the unknown of tomorrow, take some time to reflect and remember what got you here in the first place. Because I can tell you with certainty, no one on this stage chose this path because of financial security or even mental stability. We are here today strictly because of that fire in your belly that told you this is what you had to do, despite the fact that the odds were and are still very much against you, despite your grade school teachers who told you that your high energy and acting out in class was something that was a result of ADHD and a lack of much needed child therapy, <laughs> despite the fact that some of your parents may have suggested you consider this more as a backup plan or a hobby, perhaps, despite the social suicide of being a musical theater kid in high school and Unless, of course, you went to that high school they portray in Glee, where even the football players can pull off a plie without getting the crap beat out of them. <laughs> Not that I watch Glee. I'm just... <laughs> You're here today because you chose to go to college and study theater. You very well could have chosen another major, but there's something to be said about what it is to study something that otherwise can't really be graded. To hone a skill without the final result really being of value. We receive grades as a technicality. These last four years are about what you were able to take out of it. If there's anything that our teachers have taught us over the span of our time here, it's that there's no right way of doing this. There's their way, which may or may not be useful to you. You soak up what you want to and you throw away the rest. At points in time, you will lose sight of those things you soaked up here. Those gifts and tools will be overlooked and ignored due to constant self-criticism. I'm no good at this. Why do I torture myself? I'll never be as hot as Channing Tatum. <laughs> I've already come to terms with that one myself, but for some it's a real concern. <laughs> it's okay to take this stuff seriously, but don't take yourself too seriously. It's supposed to be fun. As Mr. Ross has shown us, it's the story of a kid who wants nothing more than life than to be big, or the story of a normal guy named Dave who has to take over the role of president. It's that desire to cross over into that world or step into that person's body that is so drastically unfamiliar than their own. And that is still there inside of you, and it runs deeper than that drive to get the best agent or the prettiest headshot or abs like Channing Tatum. <laughs> so as you sit there today with that uncontrollably anxious feeling in your stomach like you forgot your lines, just remind yourself the reason you chose this path in the first place. Think about the kid entertaining your family in the living room. Think about the way your grandfather tells a story. <laughs> Think about the teachers who saw something in you that the other ones dismissed as bad behavior. Think about the days of playing dress up. <laughs> Maybe that was just me. I love the way my mom's dresses look at me. Okay. Faking your sexuality with John Travolta. Okay. Think about the moment you found out you got into USC, even though your guidance, counselor may have, your guidance counselors may have said it was a bit of a reach. Think about your professors here, who have challenged you more than they've praised you. Nobody got up here today using a precise equation, and the real world isn't any less uncertain. Many of us aren't going for the respectable suit-wearing, cubicle-confined jobs. We're headed toward the unstable gigs and the hustling that we've been warned about since the words, I want to do that, left your lips at your first Broadway show or the first time you saw a movie that changed the way you saw the world. This is an unfamiliar territory. Remember that we work best with questions, not answers. We've never had a Scantron graded exam to tell us or determine our abilities. 
If anything, I've learned more from reading my fellow classmates than ever reading a textbook. We do our best work when we have no idea what's going to happen next. You made it here today because despite anyone else's doubts, even your, your own, you knew you had to do this. Don't let that change how you go into tomorrow because it never stopped you before. And just remember, when you're all big time actors, famous and rich, don't forget where you came from and donate a ton of money to the cinema school because I'm told they really need it. <laughs> Thank you and mazel tov. Thank you, Jonathan.